All right, guys, we are going to take some notes online today. And in order to do that, you need a blank space to work on and your sketchbook, and you need a pencil or something for writing with. We're just doing writing to start. So we are going to label the page uh, line, and I'm going to do it this way. There you go. There's my label. And now what we're going to create is kind of a table, if you will. So I'm going to use this piece of paper to give myself a straight line. If you have a ruler, do that instead. Okay. And creating this table, we need to have six, or no, five, I'm sorry, five different uh, categories. So different sections. There's one, two, three, four, five, and then four or five. So we want something like this in the end. Um, piece of paper behind there, so you're not seeing my drawings through the paper, but you're seeing what I've got. Okay, so it's a table. All right now we're going to label each of these different sections like this. Size. Direction. Texture. Emotion. and other. Okay, so there are your headings. Size, direction, texture, emotion, and other. Now, basically what we're going to do here, and again it doesn't matter to me if you use pencil, you use pen, whatever, you're just writing. Now, for this writing, you're going to try to fill the rest of this page with words. As many different words as you can think of that describe a line and that fall into the categories you have created. So, for example, different sizes of lines might be things like thick lines or thin lines or long lines or short lines. Okay, for size we might also say wide, which could also be considered a thick line, but still it's a different word. Or opposite of wide, narrow. We might have a fat line, which again is another word for thick or wide, but still it's a different word. Or a skinny line, we could have a big line or a short, or oh wait, I already used the word short. I could use a small line. So there are lots of other words I can use to describe line, but right now I'm just thinking about size, size words. So anything I can think up, fill this space, okay? I've already got a decent start there for you. You try to think up some of your own words next. Now the goal here is that you will fill the rest of this page or close to it with different words. A variety of words. Try to come up with different words. Any different word you can think up, write it down. And maybe a couple of these words might fall into one or two different categories, so they might wind up on here in a couple of places, but for the most part, try to keep them sorted, okay? So I'm just going to continue my work and we'll see how far we can get with this. Okay, so this is my finished list of words. Now, like I said, I want you to try to fill the whole page. I only spent a couple of minutes on this. So if you dedicate 15 minutes and you think really hard, you can come up with more. You can fill the whole page. But um, I do want you to have more than just my list because my list is my list and that doesn't take any creative thinking from you. So you should think outside the box and try to fill this page with as many different words as you can. Categorize them into these five sections. Okay, once you're done with that, then we can move on to the next bit. For our next bit of work for today, you need another fresh page, uh, and you're going to be drawing on this page. Now, uh, you're going to start by splitting this page up into six different sections, and usually how I do that is I divide it in half down the middle, the long and skinny way, 
And it doesn't have to be precise, but if you want to, use a straight edge. And you're going to split it into thirds this way. And it's okay if they're not all exactly the same size. You want them to be roughly the same size. So, no big deal if it's not precise. But then you're going to label these in these different ways. First, we're going to start with horizontal lines. Then vertical. Diagonal. Curved lines. Zigzag lines. And free form. So, again, that's horizontal, vertical, diagonal, curved, zigzag, and freeform. Those are the six different sections we have. And now in each of these different sections, we're going to fill the box with horizontal lines, or we're going to fill the box with zigzag lines. Um, and you want to try to fill the box, try to think creatively, but um, in order to give you a minimum, I'm going to say a minimum of five lines, different lines in each box. Okay. So when you are creating these lines, you can use a variety of pencils to make a variety of marks on the paper. Okay. You can change up your drawing medium to make changes on the paper. Uh, you can change up the pressure you put on the pencil. More pressure on the pencil will give you darker lines, uh, maybe potentially thicker lines. Uh, or lines that are more wide, then if you use a really gentle touch on the paper, you could come up with lines that are very uh, narrow or thin, right? And they don't have to be perfect, but I'm trying to create all horizontal lines in this one. Now I can do uh, different things to create lines as well, like if I create a horizontal lines out of a whole bunch of diagonal lines, that could be interesting, that's different. Or even, uh, these are considered hatch marks, right? If we were doing hatching, uh, I could create a horizontal line that is a scribble, right? It's just one gigantic scribble, but it all kind of moves along in the same direction. And in the end, I've created a horizontal line with a scribble, okay? Now, if I'm unsure of what I can do, what I should do is go back and reference reference the list I just made. I just gave myself a whole bunch of different words to work with. So if I'm like, gee, I don't know what else I can make. I only have four lines. I need to make one more. What if I made a line that was pointy? A pointy line, but that was horizontal. Okay, that's interesting. So a pointy line might be kind of something that is a little bit jagged, but it has a whole bunch of points in it. Right. So whatever pointy means to you, maybe it would look different than mine. That would be fine. But I've now got a pointy line. I have a very, very thin line. I've got a thick and dark line. I have a hatched line or a um, line that is <laughs> created by repeating marks on the page. And then I have a scribble. So in this way, I've done a variety of mark making on my paper. There are lots of different ways to create lines. And I've done that here. Now, if you want to fill the space, usually what I have students do is create 10 lines in each space, but um, it, I'm just trying to cut this down and make it a little bit shorter for you. The challenge would be to put 10 in here. If you can do 10, that would be great. I would love to see that extra work from you and that extra effort, but five is the minimum and that's fine. Now, moving on to vertical, you cannot just do the same exact thing you did here, just making them vertical. That's not creative thinking, that's being lazy. You gotta change it up, okay? So maybe this time, instead of a pointy line, maybe I make a wavy line that is vertical. There we go. Uh, and again, if I change up my pencils, I can make different marks on the paper as well. 
but for saving time and the instruction, I'm not going to do that. Um, I could maybe instead of just hatching lines like I did over here, I could do cross hatching lines. And remember cross hatching is when you have two sets of marks on the page that overlap each other and crisscross. Okay. So again, five different lines here, five different lines here that are diagonal, five different lines that are curved or rounded in some way, and a curve could be something as simple as that, or a curve could be kind of back and forth, whatever a curve looks like to you, just not a straight line. These are three different straight lines, straight, straight, straight. Curved is something that uh, has some shape and movement to it, okay? So a zigzag line, you know, zigzag, okay? But again, in different ways, get creative. And then free form, these are lines that can kind of go anyway, or lines that might turn into shapes. Uh, they don't all have to be the same. You could have a bunch of different things on the page. So I'm going to show you a finished example in just a moment. Okay, so I have two finished student, student examples here. Okay, and they're kind of hard to show on the whole screen, but take a look. You can create marks that move in different directions, and all of these lines, every single one of these lines, is created using a different method. Sure, here we have a line that's made of circles, and here we have a line that's made of circles, but they're different. Here there's a zigzag line made of circles, but the size of the circles are different. And in this one, they've even shaded them in to create a little bit of extra change, like these are larger. These are kind of medium, and then these are small, okay? Uh, we have dotted lines in each box, but these ones are darker and thicker than these ones. And then these ones, this is a dotted line, but really it's not just a line. Each one is a shape. So if you want to use shapes to create lines, you can absolutely do that. If you want to use values to create lines, you can absolutely do that. I want you to get creative. I don't want you to just copy everything that I'm showing you here because that's no fun, okay? So again, all of the lines are different on here, okay? And I'm asking you to come up with five different lines in each section. Let me know if you have questions.